Jose Rasco, the S&P is up around 2% so far this year, heading into the final month of the year. So what's your outlook for the rest of 2015 heading into 2016? Well, not a lot of time left in 2015. I think if you look at the U.S. economy, we're looking for it to grow at about trend rate this year. So two, two and a quarter, two and a half percent uh, rate of growth in terms of the, the, the full year. The consumer's doing better, lower oil prices, better employment picture. So that's good news. We're not worried about the Fed tightening cycle. We've been saying the Fed's going to tighten in December for a while. So I think we're in a good position where we could see some modest improvement in the S&P by year end, but nothing dramatic. Uh, the most important piece being two things. Number one is the dollar, where it goes, what it means for profitability. And second, where does the consumer go? And I think with a good job market and lower oil prices, consumer spending should do better than, than uh, it has been doing over the last six months. Well, the ECB is trying to stimulate the European economy while we're tightening over here. This is going to make for a stronger dollar. How will that affect U.S. multinational companies? Well, you know, we've been looking for this policy divergence for a while because Europe needs to keep the euro, the value of the euro lower. It needs to stay in a trading range between 110, 115 kind of range for the short term. Longer term, we've got it appreciating modestly. Don't forget, the, as the Fed begins its tightening cycle, people tend to sell the dollar in the first year. So it's like buy on the rumor, sell on the news kind of environment. That's what we've seen over the last 20, 30 years. So what does it mean for U.S. multinationals? The pressure of the, the worst of the dollar bull rally is probably behind us. The key for multinationals is not just the dollar. It's about foreign growth. And there we think we'll get some respite next year. We think we'll see some modest improvement in, in global growth, especially in the emerging markets where some of those economies that have really been battered over the last couple of years should begin a, a small turnaround, which is better for U.S. exports and better for global trade. Let's stay with the emerging markets. If we get, and people expect it to happen, a Fed rate hike in December, right. uh, continuing on through 2016, how will this affect places like China in the emerging markets? Because typically or historically, <clears throat> rate hikes here have hurt them uh, inordinately. Yeah. Well, I think if you look historically, rate hikes have been far more severe. The first year of a Fed rate hike has been far more intense than we're probably going to see in this tightening cycle. Our economist only has 50 basis points of tightening in the first 12 months, so December to December. Um, which is very, it's negligible in terms of prior historical, uh, prior tightening cycles. So we do see some drift in terms of U.S. interest rates, but don't forget global growth isn't going to appreciate an awful lot. It's going to appreciate on the margin, and therefore we see uh, that I don't think we're going to see that pressure on emerging markets like we've seen in the past. Moreover, what we've seen in the last 6 to 12 months has been this huge fall in commodity prices and therefore a weakening in domestic demand in a lot of those economies. We think that the worst of that is probably over as well. So even though we're entering a Fed tightening cycle, it's going to be modest. And because it's modest and global growth improves on the margin, <laughs> we should see some relief for emerging markets and, and better world trade. How about a quick comment on Chinese growth? And then I'm going to ask you to rank uh, the economies in 2016. Well, all 200 of them, or no? <laughs> you know, I think if you look at where we are going into next year, everybody's concerned about Chinese growth, and, and, and understandably so. We've gone from 12 to 10 to 8, and now we're talking at 6.5 as a going concern for the next couple of years. India, however, we see better growth there next year. So if you look at where we are going, positioning into next year in the emerging market space, commodity-producing countries will, will get some relief, but not an awful lot because prices probably won't appreciate much. We see oil going maybe to the mid-50s next year. That's about it. So we want economies where we see stable growth. We think China will give us stable growth. We think Mexico will give us stable growth. We think India will give us stable growth with no inflation problem. That's the key for investors because that's the ugly surprise that we all, none of us want to face. All right. And then finally, once again, for investors, if you're going to invest, win, play, show, uh, Europe, America, and the emerging markets. Rank them for me if you don't mind. Well, I think if you look, our, our big call is uh, right now is Europe because we see the dividend yield play. We see the translation effect in terms of the weaker euro, which should be positive for earnings in Europe. Continued double-digit growth in, in European earnings, even though economic growth is somewhat modest. So Europe would probably be number one. EM going into next year, not now, but going into next year would probably be number two, uh, where we see some real upside potential there. And prices don't have to move a lot for that to improve because we're seeing marginal improvement in economic growth and economic activity. And then the U.S. would be third, where we're seeing stable growth, two and a quarter, two and a half percent, no inflation problem per se, um, certainly not a wage price spiral, a modest improvement in, in inflation or acceleration in inflation. And markets should be relatively stable, a mid-signal digit kind of return. All right. Um, so, yeah, that would probably be the, the order for next year. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Jose. Thank you. Pleasure. And thank you for watching The Street.